All right, this is uh, Kelvin um, recording a podcast with uh, Ryan Salas. Uh, Ryan, he has a one-man black metal project called Ends Embrace. And so I reached out to Ryan to see if he wanted to, you know, just talk with me and also just kind of get to know him and, and the music as well. So, uh, Ryan, do you mind uh, just introducing yourself? Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ryan from Ends Embrace, a one-man black metal project from out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Awesome. Yeah, I'm calling from uh, Fort Defiance right now. Um, so um, I'm using the Wi-Fi for my for my interviews, and I have a NTUA wireless, so it's it's not the best, but hopefully it'll yeah you survive this interview. Yeah, we, we'll we'll get through it. Yeah, yeah. So, Ryan, uh, uh, kind of like, uh, what's kind of like your, you know, your your background? Where did you uh, grow up? Um, I grew up in Tuba City. Um, I lived there until I was about eighteen or nineteen years old, and then I moved out to Flagstaff for a few years. Awesome. Um, and then. Um, when you were in Tuba City, were you like uh, involved with music, or what was your kind of introduction to playing music? Um, back in Tuba, I was more of a homebody, so I did stay inside a lot. Um, just listen to live music, watch some concert DVDs. Every now and then, I uh, was involved in a music project, but you know, it was mainly just practicing and probably one show here and there. But other than that, there was really no. Um, Nothing built up until I moved to Flagstaff. And when I got there, I joined uh, Defense Street, which was uh, around for a while. So. I looked up your uh, band, Ends Embrace, on the, the Metal Archives site. And uh, you actually you have a page you know, dedicated to you and your bands. I saw Defense Street. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know that or, knew that or not. Um, What's that again? Oh, I looked up your uh, your band Ends Embrace on the Metal Archives site. I don't know if you're familiar with that website. Yeah. Yeah, and then I saw that you were involved with Defenestrate. Um, uh, going back before that, uh, how did you decide to play music? It's actually my older brother who kind of inspired me to pick up the guitar because he was really getting into you know, playing as well. So like any other any little brother, it's like, okay, well I wanna do what he's doing because, you know, why not? <laughs> so he showed me a couple bands like uh, Led Zeppelin and um Foo Fighters I believe and again just one like a lot of rock and metallic folk force was one a big one that he showed me, which kinda got me to find like to learn and find more faster music and heavier music. Yeah. Did you say Metallica? I did on their St. Anger tour back in 2004. Wow. And that was, that, yeah, that was like a trip for me. <laughs> and like, wow, I actually get to see them. This is really cool. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. But actually, um, the biggest the person I would have to give the most credit besides my brother, besides my brother would be my grandma. Because she actually bought me my first... Um, CD that had um, Dio, Scorpions, Kiss, just to name a few. So that's awesome. She's actually my gateway. Yeah, and it was like this. Uh, I know we were traveling around and stopped at a Walmart, and I saw the CD with like Stone Cold Steve Austin's face on it. It's like, oh, that's cool. Like, I love wrestling. I love watching, like, especially when he's on. And no, no idea what it was. You know, just kind of picked it up because oh, see his face on there. And uh, we go back on the road, and I put the CD in, it's like, you know, just 80s galore, like all these 80s bands. It's like, okay, this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love uh, all of all those bands, like Led Zeppelin, Dio, all the 80s. I, I went to high school in Flagstaff, and one of the big radio stations was 93.9 The Mountain. And yeah. And pretty much listened to that all through high school. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the dorm in Flagstaff. 
Flagstaff dormitory. Um, I'm uh, not. Yeah, no. there's a dorm uh, for uh, native students, and um, it's actually uh, near the Flagstaff High School. It's kind of like by, uh, close to the hospital. And oh, okay. um, yeah, it, music, I think, played a big part of that experience just because a lot of, uh, you know, that's how you made friends back then. You just, yeah, that's kind of how you found common ground with people and really related with people. And yeah, yeah, what, one of my roommates, uh, he, you know, was really into metal and we would listen to 93.9 The Mountain and pretty much got into all the 80s, uh, 80s yeah. metal, 70s, like classic rock, and uh, I always have a yeah. good appreciation for that. Yeah, yeah, it's really awesome. My uh, stepdad, my stepdad also got me to a lot of 80s metal as well too, like you know Molly True and um, um, actually more Kiss as well, like some of their 80s stuff. Is, so it's just kind of like you know, anywhere I went, it's like okay, well here's this band, here's that band. I was like, okay, this is really cool. This is awesome. And, you know, being a kid and seeing like, bands like Kiss and, like, bands that I could actually dress up, you, I just was more amazed. But I was like, oh, like, I would like to do that someday. <laughs> you know, like, just kind of like this big, you know, whatever costume it was and, like, play music. Yeah, like, uh, especially now that you're, you know, playing a black metal project and seeing Kiss and the makeup and, you know, black metal yeah. you know a lot of it's a visual um uh, visual art um so that's that's yeah. cool that you were really influenced early on uh, how did you like kind of get so you went from you know getting that gateway from like 80s and 70s uh rock and metal like kind of how did yeah. how did it you know keep evolving into where you're um you know like, how did it evolve to where you were playing into, uh, you know, bands, and especially now with black metal? Um, with bands, um, with, let's see, let's go, like, with band, um, let's go back to the black metal question. I was introduced to black metal back in high school by one of my friends who gave me a Dark Throne album, and I put that in when I got home, and, you know, it was kind of like, love that first listen. Because I just love that raw energy. It just sounded, you know, real to me. And kind of comparing to other albums at the time, um, it's like, it just felt different. You know, I just drawn to it right away. And I just wanted to find more of those bands. And it took me a while, you know, especially on the reservation. Like, you have limited resources. And this is a time before, um, I think it's around the time of LimeWire, so the same time you don't really know what bands to look up so <laughs> you just kind of you know, just try to find something and with bands um like i said when i moved to flagstaff it was a total game changer for me because i did you know try it for defenestrate which was a local band that was around for a while and i was in that band for at least i think two to three years and it was really great because it gave me all the opportunity to travel around Arizona and play shows and play open for big bands such as Shadows Fall, Haybreed, Goat Whore. So to me, I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Like I would have, would have never thought of be opening for these bands at all. So that was from 2010, 2012, um, 13. Yeah, well, um, I haven't heard of Defenestrate. Um, what kind of style did you guys play? It was... Uh, when I first joined, it was more like along the lines of Static X, so very kind of groove metal. Like, it just had a really heavy groove. And it's a really interesting way to describe it. Um, it was a groove metal, but at the same time, it, you know, it's such... Um, a different thing. Um, it can't really put into words. Um, but let's see, yeah, a lot of Pantera influence, I would say, as far as the risk go. Uh, Jameson, guitarist, uh, R.I.P. He was 
like always like just writing. He was always, you know, we go to practice, okay, well here's this rep I'm writing right now and just okay, cool and everyone kinda of joins in. Um, we did put an album out back in well, it was finally released back in two thousand and fourteen if I'm mistaken. And um it's really I think there's only hard copies. You can't really find it online anywhere. But um yeah, it I was doing that for a couple of years, and I had a lot of fun with it. And you know, I think I could stop right there for that story. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Did the band eventually keep going, or did you the band kind of stop altogether with when you left for Defender Street? Um, when I left Defender Street, they still carried on. They still uh, had a, I believe, a year or two left in there. So and. Um, played. Um, I don't know if it's getting too personal or not, but um, we played the band itself, minus Jameson, because he passed away at the time. Uh, we played a bit of a show for him at the Orphan Theater down in Flagstaff, and at that show is where we sold the hard copies of the album that we worked on back in 2012. So, and from there on, um, the people, the guys that are in that band. They carried on uh, with other projects as well, too. And they're still doing stuff right now, too, so I'm really happy for them that they found other musicians where they can, you know, continue writing with and continue jamming with because they're such talented guys. Yeah, I um, yeah, I, I went to high school in Flagstaff, and um, it's probably about the mid 2000s, like two th it was 2000 to 2004. There, uh, okay. I don't remember if there was a whole lot of uh, uh, local bands at the time. Well, didn't really get a chance to explore the, you know, the metal, local metal scene at that time. Uh, I guess it was kind of just more focused on school. But um, yeah. I know. Um, uh, you know, I would go to a show here and there, and I would check out some of the opening bands um, who were, who would, uh, I think one time me and my brother went to like a Six Feet Under show um, uh, cool. there at the That's Orpheum, cool. and uh, I remember there was like some, there was like an all-Navajo grindcore band, I can't remember their name, um, but uh, do you think, does Flagstaff have a pretty, pretty close, uh, or like a thriving uh Metal scene? Um, on the time I was in Flagstaff, it did have a third metal scene. You had um, Fume Brothers, who have been who are around for quite a while. And they're pretty good friends of ours, too. You know, we shared a practice space right next to them. So, um, you know, they would come over, check out the stuff we're working on, and we'd go check out what they're working on. So it was, you know, we're pretty, we were really cool with them. Um, I believe where Tabers Go to Die was also a a uh, big local one, and there's some of them I'm forgetting right now, but definitely um when we had shows, we had some other bands come off like from out of town and play, and yeah, it was it was really great at that time. You know, you had like up and coming bands, and you know, we just wanted more shows to happen. Yeah, did you guys ever play on the res or play a show on the res? We actually did. <laughs> we played. Um, during one of the um, Tuba City Fairs at the on the Pepsi stage, and that was a fun experience. You know, we played, I think it was like the afternoon. So there's really no one there, but at the same time, it was just awesome. We had some people sitting underneath the canopy and just kind of watching us. Like, okay, that's really cool. Like, this is fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it's the only red show they played. Um, after I left, I know they played a couple of shows out in Cameron as well, too. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's you know cool and important for for uh, res res bands to play. I mean, you know, it seems like it's just country that kind of gets all the attention on the on the res. You know, with uh, as far as like live music. Um, yeah, definitely. I would love I would love there to be more metal shows or more you know heavier shows out there for everyone to check out and. and help get like the younger generation inspired to playing that type of music or finding their own path. That'd be awesome. 
yeah, especially just on the res, you know, there's just, there's just not a lot to do. I mean, I didn't go to school or, you know, uh, go to high school on the res, but I mean, just being here, it's just, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really isolated. You know, there's just not a whole lot of things for young people to, you know, express themselves or, you know, just try to focus their, you know, their energy on something, especially something good or, you know, something creative. Yeah. And that's what, um, playing, uh, music for did to me, for me as well too. And it kind of helped me kind of like, you know, just have something to look forward to. You no, know, whether it was like trying to learn something on guitar or, um, trying to find more music or like, that's what kind of kept me, um, and I don't know if you say the word safe, but, you know, it's kind of kept me interested, looking forward to something else. Yeah. I, I got, I re yeah. got really into skateboarding. And so I, I kind of, I feel like that, that helped me. It really kind of, I had a lot of like, just pent up, like, like frustrations and just a lot of yeah. like, you know, I just, I put something, I put all that frustration and all that like energy towards trying to like, you yeah. know, learn a, learn a trick or, you know, trying to, uh, you know, at least, you know, make new friends and it really just kind of brought me out of my shell. But I, I feel like, yeah, music does, you know, it's pretty powerful and can help a lot of young, young people. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I'm glad that you found that. That's really cool. Yeah, no, I, uh, I wish I could do it more. Honestly, probably the last, uh, five or six years, I really just kind of really just haven't had time just with work and, um, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to like take time out to do, do stuff. It's kind of, you know, just, I just been busy and, uh, I, I don't know, just doing this podcast too, just kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's fun work. I mean, I, uh, I, I really enjoy it. I really just like talking about, uh, metal and, uh, you know, I still collect uh, CDs and records, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. something I I still look forward to, like you know, on a day to day basis, and even like searching for bands online, and um, yeah, yeah, it really gets me excited. That's awesome, man. Like again, like I said um, earlier, like I'm glad you're doing this podcast because it gives a lot of Native American artists, or especially musicians, metal bands a chance to actually, you know, uh, get a little more, um, spotlight in a way. So it's really awesome. And I've, been, I've listened to a couple episodes of yours and it's really cool. Like, it's like, wow, like, you know, we never thought of that or, you know, it's just getting to know someone like that. And it's like, okay, that's cool. You know, like, oh, like, I would love to know about more musicians or more bands that are, Native American and, you know, play heavy music. Yeah. Well, so. thank you. I, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts myself. Um, I, I listen to a lot of like, uh, basically I'm basically copying the format of like more popular podcasts. Like my favorite one is, uh, um, the Jamie Josta podcast, you know, he's the singer of Hatebreed. Oh yeah. I like that podcast is really great. I love that podcast. Yeah. I haven't tuned in for a while, but I really enjoy it. So, yeah, that one. And um, there's some other. I, I listen to other like non, like metal or music podcasts. I listen to a lot of like uh, sports. You know, I I'm a big like U of A, <clears throat> University of Arizona like sports fan. Like the football team and the basketball team. It's like I don't know. I I listen to a lot of like sports and mostly like college football and um. Uh, you know, stuff related to work. I work at the clinic here in Fort Defiance, so I listen to stuff for, you know, related to like health, like healthcare. So uh, I, I probably listen to a lot more podcasts than like, you know, watching TV. You know, it's just, I think it's a cool, yeah. a cool form of like, you know, picking up new information and entertainment. Yeah, definitely. definitely. But, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you can. So, what happened after Defenestrate? Um, did you uh, go back to Tuba City, or did you move to Scottsdale? Uh, so after I did Defenestrate. Um, I did play in some upstart bands here and there, and you know things don't work out for a reason. And 
Um, I did. I was in Unconscious Minds for a little while. It's another local um, band I in Phoenix, and um, that was a great time as well too. And after that, uh, kind of jumped around from band to band, like or you know, trying to look for bands as well too. And for Ends Embrace, it really didn't start until April of last year. You know, after the lockdowns happened and, you know, I was just trying to think, okay, well, what can I do musically right now? And, you know, not wanting to come in contact any, with anyone. I said, okay, well, let me try to write something by myself. You know, I've, I've always written riffs um, here and there, really did no, nothing with them. Um, so, yeah, that's how it happened. like me just wanting to write something myself, something that was different. Um, this is oh, my first black metal project ever. So I just wanted to take it um, head on. Yeah, I uh, you know, got the download. Uh, is it only available as a digital release? Yeah, for the moment, it's only digital. Um, I really didn't know how this whole thing would play out because I, you know, it just, I just put it out there. You know, I told, had a couple of friends who were telling me, oh, yeah, I'm working on this project. You know, it's, i putting it out, and that's it. I really had no idea I would get um, great feedback from it. You know, it's great. Um, with the next release, I may have a full, like, you know, with the next release, I may actually have physical copies or more to promote it as well too. Yeah, I think your your pro your band uh, ends embrace. It's like I think this is like the first Navajo one man black metal project I've come across. Uh, did you ever, or have you encountered any others, or were there, um, you know, what were kind of like things that uh, brought this on, or were there any like direct influences? Um, the thing that brought this project on was just wanting to do something different. You know, I I did watch the Vice documentary on the metal on the reservation, and I was like, okay, that, that's again awesome. I'm glad that more Native Ameri more Native Americans are getting the recognition they deserve, especially in music. You know, you don't really hear much about it about us, especially in metal. You know, so when I saw the documentary, I was really excited. I said, okay, that's cool. Like I'm glad like these everyone doing their thing like they're getting recognized for it finally yeah and have you seen that like on youtube i think vice did a thing they spotlighted like three one man black metal projects i think it was like uh like leviathan zaster and uh i forget the third one um yeah it's really interesting yeah yeah Oh, that's 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 really cool. Um, and um, like, did you kind of record it like at home, or did you like um, do it like in a studio? I recorded at home. You know, I just had my laptop, and I had this like small little iRig interface, and yeah, that's all I really had. And so, okay, well, let me just try this. Let me see if this actually works. I mean, if and lo and behold, like. I put it on EP and it's like, you know, like a sixty dollar interface and couple, like um I did buy the drums are a drum program because I just don't have don't have the space to play drums anywhere. So so I just wanted this to to go out, you know. Um as far as vocals did, I had this like small little microphone as well too. Just plugged it in and just kind of did it. Yeah, it was I, all uh, just you know. Oh, good. Sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say it's it's a it's a cool uh, EP. I I've, I've been listening to it for uh, the past few days now. Oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I like the song uh, "Bathe in Blood." It's uh, I don't know. I got I like really? the intro. It's kind of cool. It reminds me of like uh, reminds me of death. Like you know the like death like spiritual healing, kind of has that cool. Yeah. Kind of like cool vibe uh, I, I really like it oh thanks man thanks yeah with each and every song i want to do something different um bathe in blood it just 
the chorus riff is what I wrote first. And so, okay, let me just go from the beginning and try this and see what happens. Um, the first song I actually wrote from this entire project was Possession. And that uh, first riff you hear in that song was the first riff I wrote for this project. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know one so. uh, one of the big things about uh, black metal is, you know, like physical releases, like uh, cassettes, I know, like cassette tapes and um, even yeah. like this CDs are, are big on music collectors. Uh, yeah, hopefully you can get that out on on like a physical format and uh, I, I've been collecting yeah, tapes well, too so it's cool yeah yeah well I actually appreciate you buying it off Bandcamp I saw that earlier so okay that's you know thank you <laughs> but um if there is more of a uh, demand for physical um like cassettes or vinyls or even CDs I'll look into it you know I would. I just don't want to buy something that's just gonna kind of sit around. You know, I don't want to be wasteful in that way. Oh no, that's that's definitely um, that's definitely a good idea. Uh, kind of build up, uh, yeah. You know, build up the uh, anticipation, and then yeah, you know, once you're once there's live shows again, and you know, once you can kind of you know build that audience yeah. for sure, I think there will definitely be a a need for it. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. If I do build a good amount of a good audience with this, I will, you know, do more physical releases. Um, I am looking at artwork at the moment as well too for either shirt designs or you know the next album cover. You know, it's I'm not trying to dive into it too much. You know, that kind of explains why the cover on GP is just the band name title and it's a white background you know i just you know just putting something out there and also it's kind of more eye catching with the white he's kind of just made it pop more so yeah i like that a lot of like especially with black metal a lot of it's just like you know black background with uh with a white font or or some you yeah know, some image that's you know in white yeah and you know it stood out for a few people yeah and so I said, okay that's cool like thank you again for checking it out um but after the full album comes out i do plan on working on three possible splits as well too so there's a lot already kind of on the table <laughs> that kind of thing out for myself which is fine to me because like okay cool like i'm it's all in fun you know like i'm not looking to get signed or anything like that at all you know it's more just what the fun like just the passion of playing music yeah for sure and especially if you have a full-time job you know you know you got other yeah. obligations you know you gotta take care of yeah that's a really big one too and but yeah um it's awesome. um that's a lot of it yeah yeah um yeah I'm, uh you know I, I normally play a a song uh from uh, some of the bands would it be all right if i played a song from your from your ep yeah definitely you can choose whichever one you want you know yeah. which which ones you uh which which one stands out to you or which one's kind of like your favorite i would say for me lucy stands up the most you know, um, I kind of like the way I, the way it sounds. You know, it's definitely different. And it's, um, in my opinion, it's kind of like best track to end on for that EP. Awesome! Yeah, I'll definitely uh, play that. Um, but yeah, thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate it.